So this is essentially a Brigandine and a Gambeson. I'm still working on this. Uh, I started this yesterday, by the way. So I uh, had a bit of fun within the Marvel's Designer and I got pretty much this far. I started to like separate out, as you guys can see, all the little rivets that I have in here and stuff like that. So I did go uh, even further than that, but unfortunately um, did not have time to complete this to the degree that I wanted to. But still, this is a very interesting piece to uh, talk about. And I'm also in the process of recording the whole process of me doing this, by the way. So uh, I'm not sure whether I will upload that to Elganga Studio, to YouTube. We'll see how the video go once uh, it's done recording and once I'm done producing this thing. But I eventually want to uh, show you guys in some way the whole process of modeling this out and pretty much everything I've done to get to this stage here. Yeah, so this was about a, a day of work. Uh, and what I've done this morning is that I've simply I've simply integrated this within Substance Painter there. And to do so, I've pretty much followed the, uh, the whole pipeline that we have on Algang Studio to quickly retopologize a garment that comes out of Marvel's Designer without necessarily having to do re retopology there. So uh, if you guys don't remember where that is, you guys can actually go to algang.studio. You don't even need to be um, a member to get access to this either. If you guys simply go down here uh, into the class that is named, uh, let's go here to exporting out of Mars Designer. I pretty much just followed the pipeline that is in here, and uh, you can find the whole pipeline here as a uh, choose your own kind of adventure, kind of little wizard, uh, I suppose, thing there. So I pretty much just followed this here. I'm like, okay, I want to get this out. I did care about being well, so I just mentioned ZBrush, but ultimately I didn't do that. I just wanted to have a low res ish so i kind of pretty much followed this pipeline down here imported this uh or rather set the particle distance to 10. i did a quadrangulation on top of this i didn't care about welding the panels so i sort of skipped that whole part there so it's not a nice low res in any sort of way but it is quadrangulated and it is uh, certainly workable and we can talk liberally about the context of uh, painting there so the whole scene here has been set up everything has been set up so that we can uh, have a proper workflow as far as texturing is concerned, even though the low res itself isn't what I would consider to be a production ready low res there. We can talk very briefly about what leather is, okay, but just very, very briefly, just to give you guys a bit of context as to what I'm about to say there. Leather is a fascinating topic. I find it extremely fascinating. And, and, and you know, people just think of leather as just a weird thing that comes from an animal skin, but uh, which it is, but uh, there is uh, a lot <laughs> more to leather than just that, of course. If you look at a cross section of like leather, and uh, I want to do a deep dive of this with you guys at some point, I really, really do. Leather is a material where, uh, ooh, this one, I love this one, at different depths uh, of the skin, essentially, you will have different uh, visual properties. So when we talk of something that is called full grain leather, okay, it's leather is pretty much uh, the whole skin of the animal. It's the whole skin. And because it's the whole skin of the animal, there's the surface is very, very rough. There's a lot of detail there. There's, there's a lot of stuff on the surface because you're essentially looking at the surface, at the skin of the animal, like with full tertiary details. So you wind up having a lot of this that's visible on the skin. This is whole grain leather because you have all of this, all of these kind of cellular aspect, uh, Voynoy-ish aspect to the surface there. And, uh, you know, what often happens with leather is that it gets kind of cut at different depths, depending on the kind of effect, the kind of what you're sort of looking for. So you also have something that we call top grain, which is, uh, you know, you're cutting out a lot of those uh, full grain little bumps there. And you wind up having something that's called top grain, which is leather that is very, very, um, uh, it's very flat. It's very uh, glossy um, as a result. It doesn't mean that it's completely flat, but there is more flatness to it than if you had traditional full grain. And as you go down towards the, 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 the different layers, if you will, of potential letter that you have, eventually you get to something that we call suede. Now suede is a very interesting one because suede is very visually different than your full grain or top grain letter, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just letter that's been cut at a different depth there. And you wind up, uh, and often suede is also kind of sanded and you wind up having a, a bit of a piling that's very interested that kind of starts to build on top of it. So suede starts to, to has a very, very different visual properties to it. Yeah, this is suede here, but ultimately it's as much leather as full grain or top grain leather is really. That for me is really the thing that's really, really cool about leather, okay, is that 
uh, as leather, not only like uh, through its manufacturing process, but also as it gets worn, uh, it will eventually, the top grain will eventually disappear and you will eventually go down into the layers until you get to suede, essentially. Um, and so that's why, like, if you look at something that's very worn, right, like worn leather there, you wind up having the, the suede layer underneath the full grain or, to, or the top grain that starts to appear and you wind up having it be, be very visible. It's often not uh, tanned either. So I find this very interesting about leather. See here? Especially around the edges here, you start to have more of that suede that starts to show through there, right? So once we kind of understand this, uh, these basic properties of leather and, and, and what leather looks like at different depths there, it becomes very easy afterward to build that up and build something very nice using Substance Painter if you really know your way around the materials. Pretty much everything that is uh, what we could call convex on the surface Everything that's kind of convex on the surface seems to have a tendency to be more worn down to the suede than the rest of the, than the rest of the surface. And we also wind up having scratches and we wind up having other stuff too that really cuts down to the suede really. Um, but you know, just by looking at a few references left and right, it's clear to us that yeah, as a beginning, any little uh, convex part of the letter seems to get more worn down to the suede. And uh, it turns out that that's very easy to build within Substance Painter there if you simply know your way around. So let's do that in just a few clicks. Let's get that kind of effect in there. Make it look really, really cool, okay? So I'm within my Brigandine folder right here once more. We have our plain letter that is a base. We have our leather rough here, material that is applied on top of that. And take a look at this, right? I'm gonna right click on this. We're gonna create a mask for this leather rough material that we have. I'm gonna right click on it. And in this case here, I'm going to add a black mask, which will effectively make it disappear because now it's masked completely black, as you guys can see. So let me right click on this once more and add a generator to this, which uh, is uh, a bunch of different functions that we have within Painter to generate data. So that's essentially where the name comes from. And now I have a generator within my sub layer stack uh, for my mask there. And uh, so my properties now is on the left, as you guys can see. Let me click on this. It says there's no generator selected. Let me click on that. And what we're going to do, simply kind of select this little mask editor here that we have. Just going to select that. And take a look at that. It's already looking more interesting. But these are the default values that we have. Um, and so the mask editor is a place where we can build masks really quickly based off of the different data that we have baked out. So for example, right, probably the most critical one that you'll use in most cases is probably the uh, the curvature map. So if I go here, right, so I go to mesh maps and curvature, if I just press B until I get to my curvature map, it looks like this, right? Now, if you've never seen a curvature map before, this is the first time that you look at this, you could be like, well, it's just a grayscale, kind of looks like a height map, that kind of had a weird child with an ambient occlusion map. It's kind of what it looks like, right? It's kind of like in between a height map and, and an AO map of some kind. It's like, these are darker. But then again, like there's also places that are lighter. It's kind of weird, right? It's like, what the hell is this? Well, a curvature map, okay, is simply um, a texture that uh, defines zones of convexity and zones of concavity over your surface, which is where the term curvature comes from. Yeah, it means you have a convex curvature or a concave curvature. Uh, uh, curvature. And you know, all that is based on the direction of the normals. And we can, in fact, let's crank it up to one for now. And we can, in fact, uh, open this little curvature little dialog box that is in here by clicking on this little arrow here. And we can now edit more settings for this mask that is based off of the curvature map that has been baked out for this. I usually find myself really having to kill all these uh, higher values. And you guys can see what kind of happens as I play with these sliders here, as I bring them down. What will eventually happen is that you will get a mask that will essentially only use the uh, sharper portions of your curvature map, if that makes any sense. Let me press M, go back to it. And now you guys can see that now I'm starting to have uh, a rougher surface here around the places where my surface is convex. Uh, it's also becoming a bit flatter there. And it's essentially, we're starting to get a lot of that nice suede that is starting to punch through there. 
Super cool, right? Okay, what else can we do with this? Uh, I mean, I don't have to continuously tweak the mask editor, but I can continue to build the mask layer stack, if you see what I mean. So I could definitely still go in here and I could add maybe, uh, maybe let's add a fill in this case. Let's have some fun with a fill layer in there. Here it's set to grayscale because it's within a mask. There's obviously no color we can fit in there. It has to be a shade of gray of some kind. But I could definitely go in grayscale here and I could start to play around with all these like bunch of different stuff that are there. Ooh, what's interesting? Ooh, there's some 3D noises, stuff like that. Okay, interesting. Why don't we try something like that and see where that brings us, right? Ooh, here's a little worry noise. A little worry noise, 3D whirly noise that it call, right? Interesting, okay, okay, okay. So what happens if I play around with these settings? Let's go down here to our noise parameters and we can play around the scale of this if we want. I could definitely just, just keep this here just as, as a very basic kind of noise pass. And you know, we're essentially doing what we've done last week. We've, we're building a layer of different tertiary details. That's really how you want to think about it. Uh, if you uh, sort of understood my approach to building tertiary details in a face, I apply this approach to like everything because you build details very, very quickly. And you always have the, you always have the chance afterward to go back in there and start to manually tweak stuff, of course. You can always do that, but I always like to start with this very uh, procedural approach, fill everything with noises, these, these, these sorts of things, until you get a recipe that you really like. Okay, uh, so what can we do with this? Well, right now it's set to normal. How about we set this to, I don't know, we could try overlay maybe, see what that kind of brings us here. You guys can see it's already adding a bit of texture to this. That's kind of interesting already. A little texture it's kind of adding. I could even just keep it like this. I kind of even already sort of like it, right? I see where you're going with this. This is very cool. This is very powerful, but uh, eventually still want to be like adding scratches manually and stuff like that. Okay, fine. Let's have some fun with that. So let me add another fill to this. Let's select uh, something that's a lot grungier there. Perhaps uh, not one of these procedural passes, maybe. Ooh, scratchy. Okay, I like that one. Oh yeah, take a look at that, right? That's kind of cool. Uh, perhaps the problem right now is that these are disconnected. They're not actually tiling over the surface uh, in 3D space, if you see what I mean. We want to be selecting this down and want to do, in this case, let's do a triplanar projection. Yeah, take a look at that. Ain't that cool? All right, I like that. No more tiling issues. Cool, 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 okay. Let's play around the scale maybe. Oh yeah, I can get a bit of that. Okay, here's what I kind of want to do with this. That's kind of cool. I want to add some of these scratches, but I want to add scratches that are facing forward because, you know, this guy's been in a fight. He's got a lot of like, uh, like he's got hit a few times with like a blade of some kind. And so he winds up having scratches more on the front of his armor than on the back of his armor, right? Like you kind of want to tell that that story through the texturing that you're doing there. We kind of want to do that a little bit there. So let's let's have some fun then with this. Let me try moving this to the bottom of my layer stack. And then uh, this one here, I'll put it at linear dodge add as opposed to normal. Oh yeah, that works. Okay, that's cool. So here's what I'm gonna do, okay? Let's simply hide all of these that I have. So now pretty much the only thing I have is this uh, grunge scratch that is there. Okay, let me add a layer on top of that, uh, which will be another mask editor. So let's do that. Let's add another mask editor on top. Let's add a generator. Let's go in here, let's select a mask editor. And so uh, once again in my mask editor here, I'm gonna kill the uh, curvature coming from front there. So let's put that to zero. And what I want to do instead, okay, this is why we have something called a world space normal, which is essentially just a texture that uh, gives us the orientation of a surface in uh, world space. So that's really, really cool. We can mask a bunch of stuff with this. So what am I gonna do here? Let's put our world space normal to one like this. And now let's go into our world space normal settings. And let's say uh, that we do not want any of this coming from top to bottom. That's not what we want. We want front to back. So let's take a look at this. Let's go for a uh, global contrast value that we have in here. World space normal, we can probably tweak this here. Now I'm pretty much just going to, because this is white and I want the white to be the part that will be visible and my grunge are under it, as you guys can see, I'm simply going to multiply this. So I'm going to take this particular mask editor, set it to multiply, and now it is multiplying 
the layer under it so that only my scratches are coming from front. And there we go. We have a few scratches pointing forward, but no scratches elsewhere. So what time is it? 4.10. This is one of the longest slots we've had, actually. I'm going to wish you all to have a great week. I will speak to you all during the week on Discord. Worst case, I will see you guys next weekend once more. Uh, take care, guys.